Hey everybody, this is Ilad, and we are back for another episode of Star Made. In our last episode, I started working on a shipyard design, uh, where I'm going to basically build myself a new, bigger, more powerful, and better protected uh, um, mining ship. Yeah, that's what we call them. Uh, so this is as far as I got. We just worked on the cockpit. Uh, in today's episode, I'm going to... Uh, start working on extending the length of the ship. That's going to involve an access corridor to get where we're going. And it's going to involve um, sort of roughing in a cargo bay. So let's jump into that. Now as far as interior access, there are two things that I've got going on that I, I really want to really do. One of those is going to be a uh, gravity tunnel that's going to just sort of drop me from one end of the ship to the other. If you've played Star Made much, I'm sure you've seen things like that done before. Uh, the other one is going to be an actual walkable corridor, and that's going to be on this side. All right, so um, I'm going to do part of this with symmetry on because the, the rough design of the corridors is, is going to be pretty much set. What do you think? Does that work? I think that might work. Yeah, it's a little cramped right here. I shouldn't cramp stuff so much. It's one of my flaws in StarMade. Now, uh, in the first episode of this new Star Maid series, I uh, accidentally got myself kidnapped by a um, one of the one of the faction ships. And as I was reviewing the video for that, I couldn't help but notice like the uh, corridor design on that ship was really cool. Actually, uh, I really liked the way that it was three blocks wide but felt really claustrophobic because the the ceiling immediately sloped in so really and truly there wasn't much space beyond like just straight down the middle that you could actually move and weirdly i i really really kind of appreciated that aesthetic and so i want to recreate it here i'm um, not going to do it exactly the same way but i am partly ripping off <laughs> Uh, a pre-made design within StarMade. And you know what? It's fine. It's, uh, it's all happening in the same universe, right? So look, none of this actually panned out, but I'll tell you what I was trying to do. Um, <laughs> uh, the gravity system in Star Made is very restrictive on how to trigger gravity blocks. 
gravity generators, whatever they're called. Um, basically, you can trigger it with a button or an activator, but you have to either trigger the button or the activator either by, by yourself, like through the player, or through an area trigger. And there might be some other way to do it that I can't remember, but uh, if you if you trigger those uh, those controls any other way, uh, the gravity block won't actually activate, and you can't turn on the gravity block using any other logic blocks that I'm aware of. So uh, you know, I figured, well, I, I think I actually know a way around that because. Um, like I wanted to be able to have a single tunnel that you could walk into from either end and it would switch you into the appropriate gravity to drop you to the far end super fast. Um, normally you would do this either with manual controls, but I wanted to use area triggers, or you would do it as two separate tunnels, but I wanted just one. So. I thought, well, look, if um, if the activation module that triggers the gravity block is tied to a, a flip-flop, if the flip-flop is owned, then the activation block will be owned. If the activation block will be owned, then I can't trigger it own again to trigger the gravity block, right? So... Um, in this way, I thought I could make a conditional activator for the gravity block, which there's, I couldn't think of any other way to do it. Um, so I tested it out and this is what I figured out. <laughs> Again, nothing can, um, the, the activation block that triggers the gravity block can't be activated through logic itself. Like it's, it's got to be directly triggered either by the player or by an area module controller. Um, but I figured, you know, there again, if it's already owned and it's being held on by a flip-flop, it can't trigger the gravity block, right? Wrong. If a player interaction or an area trigger controller interaction would toggle an activation block, on or off, the activation block triggers the gravity block. It doesn't matter if something is already holding it on and the area trigger controller tries to turn it on a second time, uh, the, the gravity block will read that as the activation block turning on, even if it was already on. It's a really weird quirk in the game design um, in the, in the gravity block code it's very unfortunate and made it super frustrating so <clears throat> after thoroughly exploring that whole realm of possibilities I decided okay okay screw it I'm gonna mount the the gravity blocks on a separate entity and they're gonna be triggered by two separate sets of area triggers and I'm gonna move that entity back and forth to reposition the area triggers so the right one is in the right place at the right time. <sighs> it that yeah, mm, theoretically should work. It was much more trouble than it was worth to get it working. I kept falling out of the ship for no reason whatsoever. Um, so screw it. I'm just gonna. I am gonna have the one tunnel, but I'm gonna manually activate the gravity blocks with buttons on either end of the tunnel and uh, not try to have anything be automatic through area triggers. This is pretty much what happens every time I try to do almost anything with area triggers. I get so fed up with the the, the finicky stupid logic behind them that I just end up running it through buttons or activators. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, I guess. keep thinking there might be a different way to do this. I'm going to I'm going to end up revisiting this later. <laughs> well, um <laughs> I quit. <laughs> uh I had almost forgotten that uh these what are they called step on sensors? Yeah, step on triggers even existed. 
they do exist. Um, and I thought, well, hey, maybe that's what I need. Maybe that would get things working. Well, no, because these act like activation blocks that you trigger by stepping on them. And uh, they don't work like the, the area trigger controllers at all. So, <laughs> like, if it did, this would be activating, right? Now, I can link these. Um, I can even link it directly to the gravity block, but you can tell exactly how much good that does. Yeah. Uh-huh. If I link it directly to, to the gravity block, I can trigger it that way. Like by pressing R on it. Fat letter good that does me. If I wanted that, I would just place a button and be done with it. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to try one last thing that I know is not going to work, and then I'm just going to install the button. I'm going to take a gravity block, and I'm going to put it... Oh, let's turn it the way I want it. I'm going to put it right under the step-on trigger. Just to prove to myself that that's not going to do it either. I am in gravity, yeah. Yep, okay. <laughs> so here's how we're going to run this. Um, this is not what I wanted. I really wanted something automatic. I'm not going to get anything automatic. It's, uh, it's a real shame. Basically, oops, I'm going to take these thin buttons. Yeah, small, small button. And I'm going to... Go ahead and drop that there. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna shift some stuff around, but this is just uh, more of a temporary thing than anything else. Partly because right now uh, moving through that field is actually going to take me out of the gravity field, which is not ideal. Really hate the way these things work. Um, but yeah, basically I'm just going to be able to smack that and we're where I need to go yep just like that what I did down here at the far end is uh, it was more like testing proof of concept like I said this is not a permanent thing but this is what I'm actually going to do with these uh, these area triggers trigger areas is I'm going to have the uh, I'm going to have them kind of off in this little alcove so that there's really no reason for me to wander unthinkingly into the area. Like just normal movement will carry me right past it. Down here I'm going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to move this corridor centrally right here so I can have a little, little alcove with the areas in it. I feel like that's just going to be the least frustrating way to go about setting all this up. And since I've already done most of the really frustrating ways of setting it up, including many that didn't work, um, I'll take what I can get. In any case, we got almost nothing done here. Oh, whoa, 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 hang on. I don't think you guys have actually seen this yet. I, I think I didn't show this on camera at all. All right, I'm going to try this again. Uh, since trying to show you this new feature that I built off camera, I have uh, realized that I forgot to put in a decent way to control it and uh, fallen out of the ship in gravity. So uh, it's been it's been an adventure. But hey, look, I've got a lift. Walk on. Ooh, interesting. I keep doing everything wrong with this. Let's try this again. All right, so you're off. We've got a lift. Whoop! Yay! Carries me down to where the cargo bay area is going to be. Nice, huh? And <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out exactly how I want to deal with this uh, switch on, switch off kind of issue. I think probably easiest solution would be to do where am I? Something like.
moving this out here. Fully engaging into the lift car so that I cross it twice every time. Yeah, yeah, cool. And if, um, yeah, if I happen to be on the wrong floor somehow, like I took a stairwell up, I do have a functioning lift call. Yeah, cool. You may notice that the, um, that rail doesn't actually change orientation. Uh, that one is actually purely decorative. Uh, I know it makes no sense to actually do it that way when I've got the real rail just right here anyway. This is the one that does change. But I don't ask why, I just kind of like it this way. Like I, I like the fact that this one doesn't change. And I can't even articulate why. Just how I, how I am. Uh, so there, there, there's that. Anyway, um, did build that off camera. Exit me. There we go. I oh, and on this side, I built a ramp up from the cargo bay to this part of the ship. I'm probably going to shift some stuff around or redesign some stuff to accommodate it better. And then out this way, I've blocked in an airlock that is not uh, really, there's no logic wired up. But this is where the the front airlock is going to be, I reckon. So I did get that done. So I, I, I accomplished some stuff, mostly off camera, because the on camera stuff was primarily failing to get any of this crap working right. At least I learned how frustrating gravity is. <laughs> All over again, because I used to know that. But, you know. Uh, I don't know. This episode's kind of a train wreck. We're going to roll with it, because I did things, and there they are. I hope you've gotten a kick out of it. If so, please uh, consider leaving me a like, possibly hitting the subscribe button if you want to watch me screw up repeatedly in another episode in the future. And I would like very much to see you back again, laughing at me once more. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.